Hi, welcome to the seventh night of the E-Shift Music Festival, proudly supported by Sydney Improvised Music Association. I'm Jeremy Rose, and I'm really looking forward to another great night of music here. We're going to be featuring vocalist Kristen Barati, streaming live to you from her place in Lucerne, Switzerland, which is currently teaching. Um, E-Shift Music is an independent record label that champions jazz and creative music from the Australian music community with an international outlook. This is the fourth edition of our annual festival, and this year we're celebrating the resilience of artists in what has been a really incredibly challenged time for musicians all around the world. We're also championing the diversity of contemporary jazz and improvised music practice, brought to you direct from the intimacy of homes across uh, around Australia and Europe. Now, Kristen is really an exceptional artist and one of my, my favourite vocalists out there. She's won a number of awards and released several acclaimed albums. And her recent releases uh, of her collaborations on the E-Shift label include her duo with uh, her stunning duo with Sam Anning uh, on the album Your Songs, uh, sorry, Our Songs, Not Songs, and also working with Sean Foran and Raphael Carlin on the album Haven featuring Pascal Schumacher. But for now, I'm really excited to pre present uh, Kristen here for you. So I'm going to hand it over and we'll have an artist chat at the end. So take it away. Thanks so much for having me, Jeremy. It's um, important to me to stay a part of um, the Oz scene as well. Um, I'm going to remove these. I thought I'd start with um, uh, one of the ones uh, Sam and I recorded. This is called More Than We Need. So if I tread softly, will that mean you'll stay sleeping? There's no guarantees in this world.
I really wanted to um, have a new song for this. Um, and I don't. Um, I have half a new song. Um, so maybe um, if if you follow my Instagram, hopefully I'll have that in, in a couple of weeks. Um, so I'm playing all songs that have already been released. Um, actually, no, that's not true. I've got one song that I'm going to do that um, hasn't been released, but hopefully um, in the new year. Um, this one is called The Light and the Dark, and that's That'll, that's the name of um, the new recording that I have coming out. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll just stop. <laughs> stop talking. No, I not Oh, not Oh, I not Oh, I not Oh, I not passes in its flight and all of the while it's in the light and in the dark that we see more than we want to see are you hiding your spark did you see more than you want to see well all right if you don't think you'll make it through this ride well just leave me now, I'll be alright I've done it all before It's not a fight With these two I'll be fine It's in the light and in the dark That you see more than you want to see Are you hiding your spark? Did you see more than you want to see? You want to believe? you there's a better solo on the album because it's not me well all right if you don't think you make it through this ride well just leave me now i'll be all right i've done it all before it's not a fight with these two i'll be fine it's in the light and in the dark that we see more than we want to see are you hiding your spark did you see more than you want to see want to believe oh lord oh lord oh oh hey the I'm going to do one more tune of mine. Um, this one's called He Was a Loaded Gun. And um, thanks again to, to Jeremy um, and Earshift and Seema. And um, yeah, thank you all for tuning in. And um, yeah, keep supporting musicians and artists where you can. And um, let's keep uh, lifting each other up. Okay. Mm-hmm. He 
was loaded again. Years in the making, years of taking the only one he could trust or understand. A man made man. He was a court of law, judge and the jury full of fury for how he saw the world from his bird's eye view, him and you. High on the hill, looking down at the common folk, judging their choices and their ways, keeping at a distance so no one could judge you the same, you never to blame. He was a magician's hat, full of illusion, intrigue, no inclusion. He wore it like a prize, it's all a game to him. Game to win. win. He was a eulogy, knew the ending, always pretending, a writing of your demise. As he weeped, the thieves his web of lies away from mother's eyes. High on the hill, looking down at the common folk, judging all their choices and their ways, keeping at a distance. So no one can judge you the same, never to blame. Oh, 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 oh. That was wonderful. Oh, thanks. Really thanks, wonderful. Jeremy. Beautiful. Yay. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about your album with, with Sam. So firstly, you know, congratulations on, on a stunning recording. Um, what was it like playing with in such a stripped down lineup? I mean, literally you're playing with uh, the opposite ends of the pitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, no drums, um, no drums, no piano, besides, I guess, some feature uh, artists. But, um, you know, did that pose challenges or opportunities for you? Yeah, I think um, more um, opportunities. Um, I really love 
Uh, I've worked in duo form a lot. I guess starting out in a in a really um, rural setting meant that a I was like the only vocalist people could ask. Yay! And second of all. Um, it was often with just with one other person. So a lot of my gigs were with piano or just guitar. Um, so I got used to that setting and I kind of find that a bit more comfortable than adding more people. And so, for those at home, I mean, where, where, where are you from again? Oh, just sorry. From... Yes. Um, so I'm from, <laughs> you know, everyone's, in, I, I sometimes do that in, in talking with people. It's like, you know, what's in my head, right? Like I don't have to spell everything out. Um, so I'm from a little country town called Kamala. Yeah, represent. Um, and it's about 45 kilometers south of Mackay on the Bruce Highway. So you, you've driven through it if you've um, traveled north. Um, and I um, started singing more in high school and I did high school in Mackay. And yeah, so I guess that being in duo form is kind of a bit more comfortable for me, but then Sam and I had worked together, you know, we'd, we'd be put together for different um, ensembles and we, I think, uh, I mean, he's an awesome musician anyway, so I'd always I'd admired him um, and loved playing with him. But I think at one stage, like, we just kind of went, why don't we just do something like, because <laughs> we do like these, you know, let's do the start of the form and to the B, like just bass and voice. And so we do that and it'd be like, oh God, that feels good. <laughs> and then that's all you'd get. And so one time we were just like, shit, let's do this. Um, um, and I think because we have very similar um, ideas around music and definitely we feel groove in, in a similar way. So I guess when you find those people that you're feeling the, um, the subdivisions, <laughs> the same, it just makes it so easy because then if, if you're both playing, it's fine. But if you're both not playing or if one of you is playing, it's also fine because you still have, you're on that same, uh, wave or something. Um, and he's a brilliant singer songwriter in his own right. I know. Right? How good is so, he? Yeah. I'm so think... proud of him for doing his thing. It's wicked. So, I mean, can you, can you tell if, if someone has a sensibility that's playing with you, whether they sort of understand the mind of how, you know, how the lyrics link to the music and what give, giving the lyrics space and that sort of thing? Yeah, totally. That's exactly it. I mean, Sam, um, would sometimes, um, well, he's, he's a sensitive musician, but also a, a sensitive human. So sometimes, um, we'd go, be going through a song and I could tell he was playing it a little differently or doing a little more or he's changed some things. And that, and I'd be like, man, that was wicked. What, what, what was that about? And he's like, oh, I can tell that you're feeling more comfortable with that section. So now I can add to it. Like, and he, so he was, so in some of the more difficult things, like some of the vocalises that I'd written, I'd be like internally just going, don't stop it up, don't stop it up. And he's like just being really simple until I, you know, like things like that. Like I didn't even have to communicate that. So just find yourself a Sam, people. Like <laughs> but he's just, he, he's not available all the time because he needs to work with me, okay? Um, but yeah, he's he does. He really thinks about the words and um, – and I guess, yeah, coming from that place, as you say, that he writes and he's thinking about how does, how can this sonically help the story? Mm. <laughs> um, because that's, it, it, and I think that's kind of the point really. Like if we can take care of the music, if all aspects of the music can help um, create the setting but and the mood and the shift and how much better is that than communicating to the people listening? Like hopefully they can imagine it um, clearer or something. Uh, another collaboration that you have at the moment that's really interesting is is your work with with Dan Tefner, um, mm. you know, who's who's a brilliant, innovative uh, pianist based in New York. Um, and he's really embraced the, the possibilities of, of live streaming and, and doing live stream concerts with artists in different, you know, he's literally been performing with artists in different locations around New York City. Um, so can you tell us about um, what, what you've been doing with him and, and what, mm -hmm. what, what you're learning about this new, the new possibilities of, of technology? Yeah, totally. Um, so Dan Tepfer is, 
he's well he's he's a brilliant musician um but he yeah really has his head around um the tech side so i didn't realize but like um he's been recording his own um cds like setting all that stuff up all the gear and doing that for years now and so he's always had um an understanding and um and i guess been growing that uh in depth <laughs> knowledge of all that stuff and then when the pandemic hit yeah he started he wanted to stay on top of um just playing live for people so thankfully he asked me to do a couple of those and we he then uh, uh, did it like a we did a collaboration when i was still in brisbane and he developed this app that if i so he sent me like a a keyboard to my computer see this is how good i am with technology people so he's like sending me the thing and then i press a note on my computer and that um uh makes his uh keyboard it's a it's an acoustic piano but it's also like what is that called the clavin clav it's something amazing by y y yamaha um and and it programs to play his I can't even speak English now because I'm learning German. Um, <laughs> it's really bad. Yeah, so it was programming his piano. And so then I was improvising with him and his piano in real time. It's kind of amazing. So we've done a couple of things like from that far away. The audio was really difficult. I must admit, like my my audio was distorting and stuff. But I was like, trust, trust, trust your ear. Um, then we did a, another collaboration. I was in Lucerne and he was in Paris. And we did that live, did a few um, songs. And the latency wasn't too bad at all because he's developed an app where, yeah, he can play with people remotely. And he it's, um, it's called Jack Trip. And um, no, no, no. Is that his? No, his is called different. Anyway, it's like Jack Trip. Hmm. Sorry, Dan. So it's like Jack Trip, but it it um, takes the latency down to like almost nothing. It's crazy. It's so good. Um, yeah, and it's just, I guess, yeah, keeping the possibilities of uh, playing with people um, and and doing it live. Because, uh, yeah, I guess um, people have been touring again over here. Like I've noticed a lot of Americans have been able to come and tour. Um, and there's a lot of uh, things in place that you have to have um, your COVID pass so that you've got your vaccinations. And so there's all these measures in place, but still this is a part of our world now. So there's this, um, you know, there is a risk uh, that, so, you know, someone may have been at some after party, you know, like there's, there is, it could happen again at any point. Um, someone has symptoms in your child's school and you're all going off to get a test or something. So it's just, I guess these things that we can do so that if we, we can't play together or can't meet together, having that option is, um, is pretty awesome. Cause yeah, the, I don't know, um, having that interaction also with, with the audience is pretty great. And that's what his live streams have done. Like, just having a community coming together and kind of chatting about the music and um, keeping each other going, being real about the situation it has been really nice too. Hmm. Yeah, well, I was going to say performing online often means that you use the collab collaborative element. Um, mm. You know, I mean, you, you performed solo in this, this context just now, but um, I guess you've been able to do this, this online real-time collaboration with Dan. So, um, I don't know how, you know, how do you compensate for that when you're doing a solo live stream? And is mm. it something that you really miss? I do. I mean, I practice like this, um, obviously. I teach this way. But, um, and I mean, yeah, I just, I prefer working with other people. Um, often my, my brain is 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 splitting between um because my piano skills aren't up at my vocal skills like sometimes i'll want to do something and either my, my vocal or my piano thing will kind of be like Mer. and um so you're sort of like then i'm like oh good reminder why i work with other 
people. Um, which, you know, in turn kind of gives you, uh, it keeps you humble um, and it keeps you working, you know, it keeps you um, wanting to, uh, yeah, I keep having to go, okay, I keep working at my um, piano skills or, you know, t practicing one and then together, things like that. But um, I, I love working with other people because, you know, they, they come up with some beautiful things that I wouldn't go for, you know, and then that leads me um, into a new sonic place as well. Um, I, I love that about the collective. Um, I was encouraging some students yesterday in that just to keep listening because when you're listening and you're um, open to it, you don't have to come up with all the ideas then. It's actually really sweet because <laughs> you can just, um, it becomes more of a, a, a group effort in your solo. It's, it's not really your solo, it's the solo happening <laughs> together. It's, it's a really beautiful um, sharing kind of place. Um, yeah, and, and I guess performing online, it's, um, there are more challenges for engaging audiences. I mean, you know, you have to think about the staging and lighting and uh, camera angles and, you know, your instrument, the background. I mean, are these things that you had to think about for this performance? I mean. So I'm so bad at that. I, I, yeah, I'm bad at that. And I really i struggle with um when the pandemic hit i was like right Kristen, this is your time to get yourself a home set up it's happening you can't avoid it this is life and then i avoided it for you know most of my time in australia and and then um when did i get my interface i think i got my interface here in switzerland i was like so now you're not avoiding it any longer <laughs> like so yeah i think you, you need to think about the gear. You need to think about um, what it looks like for the people. And all these things, I must admit, don't occur naturally to me. Um, and I think that's always been my, um, one of my weaknesses is um, since I was starting out, I was like, it's about the music, man. Like, so I'm gonna do really beautiful music and move you and it doesn't matter what it looks like. And that was kind of what it was in the start. I was like this, I was so still and people, yeah. and my first review was that I looked like a curlew, you know, the curlew birds that just oh, like gosh. stand like okay. super still. <laughs> yeah. Um, so freeze frame. Yeah, that was me. So, um, so yeah, I need so this whole thing means that yeah someone like me really needs to take care of that working with Dan has showed me so much like he carries his gear he carries this lighting thing that goes pop and then it looks amazing mm. um and he swears by it and and I think you know once you've got something that works and um yeah like there's a continuity also with with what he does so you, you see his live stream and you're like oh yeah that's the tip for vibe, you know, yeah. um, which is really inspiring because, um, yeah, I I've used my phone before with him and I'm just like, I understand <laughs> why you do this stuff. This, this is. But I mean, you, you're, you have a great uh, online social media presence, you know, your, your, cool. your use of uh, platforms such as Instagram and, you know, I see you're on TikTok. I mean, has that offered you other ways to engage with audience. And does that kind of impact the way that you create music and develop new material? Yeah, yeah, true. Um, I've, I used to uh, feel really awkward about sharing stuff. And then um, I remember my brother um, said to me, hey, Chris, you know, you just, just be on there more, like just, and just keep being yourself, but just do it more. And so I stopped thinking about everything I did. I just tried to, share more and um and yeah you're right jeremy it has helped me um i'll just put up a snippet of a song or i'll say this is what i'm working on or um i think yeah like it's been and especially moving over here because i didn't know anyone um directly um in lucerne um 
and I couldn't really play with anyone because when when we moved it was um it was a it was Christmas but then it, it kind of immediately went into lockdown so there was no way of connecting with people so it just kept me and TikTok has kept me kind of making music <laughs> um for these aren't own. dance videos these are obviously you know. <laughs> Exactly. Well, you can check out my TikTok and see. No. Um, uh, so, yeah. So, it's kept me feeling like I still sing, you know, in those times where I have no singing and n no people. Um, I'm slowly starting to meet people, but it's it's been nice to be like, oh, I'm just going to sit down and, and try to do some harmonies to this really nice song and mm. um, blend or whatever. Yeah. Um um, and, and I think too, you know, maybe also being, being, uh, encouraging of people just to share and not worry that it's not perfect or share, um, some of the mistakes as well as some of the great things that you do, because there, you, you can get a little, that whole world is a bit like everything's perfect. So it's nice to kind of feel like you can go, some real life out there too you know yeah <laughs> beautiful all right um well we're, we might just wrap it up but mm -hmm. um tell us uh what have you got coming up what's up on the horizon obviously you got um, a new record in the in the bag so yes i got exciting. a record um and it's um nearly all new material that will be released um it features one of my mentors from from like early days for me so ingrid jensen is on trumpet and um playing her ass off as she does troy roberts is is a feature on there as well sam anning produced it and um and plays on a couple of tracks because like it just felt weird to kind of have him there but him not playing it was such and it was a real like I made that super awkward and, and, and amazing because that's what I do sometimes. <laughs> and I was like, I really want you to play, but I want you to anyway. So he produces and plays and Marty Jaffa is also on bass. Who's amazing. Um, he's based in New York. Uh, Miro Sprague is, uh, on piano a beautiful player and Jerome Jennings is on drums. So I'm, ha I'm sort of looking forward to getting um getting that out into the world i'm slowly starting to meet some musicians here um in switzerland so hopefully um i can do some gigs here in the flesh um and yeah start now that travel is is possible um doing some gigs i did a gig um a live stream gig with dan tepfer in in paris and and daniel gasson in paris so hopefully we can do some more stuff we're looking forward to that and um, I thought of something, but now it's gone. <laughs> anyway, well, yeah, hopefully. just writing and hopefully playing. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to see you perform <laughs> face to face at some point, either mm. here in Australia or, or over in Europe. Uh, yes, yes. When I can come back, um, I've got a few things, sort of, you know, uh, a few <laughs> things that are already lined up, like when that's possible that's going to happen so something near Correct. adelaide and um melbourne and um oh that's what i'm going to start soon too is my churchill fellowship um congratulations doing, that's oh, fantastic thank you yeah i really i'm looking forward to getting some lessons um in the jazz realm obviously with composition and improvisation and um just furthering that whole thing, but also um, I want to do some extended vocal techniques um, with some people over here. There's so many musicians that um, do it heck good. So I'm really um, excited to, to learn more about that. Great. I'll look forward to that. Thanks. Me too. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Kristen. And uh, Thank you. once again, thanks a lot to Sydney Improvised Music Association and all of our other sponsors here. That's it for tonight. But um, uh, yeah, hope to see you again. Thanks, Kristen.